Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for August 15th, 2024. My goodness, already halfway through the month, incredible volatility that we have seen. And um, well, it could easily continue today with all the data that we have coming at us. How about we take a look at what happened overnight here in these charts. First off, um, Asian markets, Asian markets were mostly green last night. We only had uh, Hong Kong just ever so slightly lower. Shanghai had a good day up 0.94%. Haven't seen that for a while um, with the Nikkei rising 0.78%. So pretty good um, moves there overnight. If we take a look, uh, by the way, Japan's GDP growth beat expectations, so that helped things out. European markets are also helped out by um, the UK having that little tiny bit lower um, um, inflation expectation, but it was, uh, it was above their, um, um, their targets. And they um, also showed some growth in their economy as well. That helped a little bit over there in Europe um, as well. European markets are pretty modest here this morning. The CAC is actually just a little bit lower. FTSE is basically flat and the DAX is looking at a 0.24% um, increase this morning. U.S. futures this morning are also trying to, um, well, say we're in really good shape. Everything is awesome. Um, after we saw that CPI number come in just ever so slightly um, better, um, it, it was enough to get all of the all of the news agencies to promote oh my gosh the rate cut is in it's all it's all it's all in the cards yet we had fed funds futures um uh, pulling back that idea of a 50 basis cut to maybe more like a 25 basis cut that being said though we're still trying to hold on to that bullishness and continue this um relief rally to the upside Dow futures right now up 73 points, but um, S&P 500 and NASDAQ futures are very modestly up here at the moment. Let's take a look at um, other things here in the market. First off, we had oil. Um, if we take a look at XLE, XLE, the oil producers in here, they did move um, up yesterday, but yesterday we saw a little bit of pulling back um, in those oil futures. This morning, oil futures are just a little bit higher up 54 cents at 77.54 a barrel. And Brent this morning is squeaking back above $80 a barrel. Um, up 57 cents. So we're up at 80.33. Yesterday that slipped back below $80 a barrel. Um, remember, we um, um, have um, natural gas um, trying to come up out of, uh, out of this bottom here. And we've got a little tiny bit of bullishness trying to hold in here there after a little bit of a pop and drop yesterday in that price action. A little bit of higher low, that could be interesting here in natural gas. Um, this morning, um, as we've got bond yields moving up a little bit, we've also got gold moving back up. Now gold had a tough day yesterday, down about $25 an ounce, but you can see we're gapping higher this morning and pushing up. And gold futures are running uh, pretty strong here this morning. Right now up about $15.80 on the futures per ounce. It's been as high as like $16.50 an ounce. Um, silver is also gapping higher here this morning, trying to push on up. So keep an eye on that. We've got copper and uh, platinum up just a little bit and palladium just slightly lower. Cryptos this morning, well, still a little bit rough on those cryptos. Uh, Bitcoin had a rough day yesterday down about $1,800 point, uh, $1, a coin um, at the close yesterday um, and also down about $535 a coin this morning. If we take a look at BITO, you can see might be running into a little bit of price resistance right here in that chart and that possibility that we may still follow that trend to the downside. Keep an eye on that. Now, a lot of this has to do with what's going on in um, 
um, these bond yields and bond yields are pushing up just a little bit again this morning um, 3.95 percent on the twos that hasn't moved much the 10-year has pushed up though to 3.84 percent and the 30-year at 4.13 percent so we'll want to be keeping an eye on those bond yields um, that's also having uh, pretty significant impacts on the U.S. dollar as you can see here yesterday, US dollar dropped pretty hard, but rallied back up just a little tiny bit, tried to hammer in there, trying to show a little bit of strength here this morning, but overall, we're looking at a downtrend here in UUP and uh, failing this price resistance in the chart, uh, not a good thing. And we would kind of expect this to be occurring with the Fed wanting to uh, potentially cut rates in September that usually weakens the dollar. It means the value of our, our spinning power goes down here in the United States. Let's take a look at our um, um, index charts here and see if we can glean a little bit of information about how we want to approach the market for today. But before we do that, everyone, if we could just settle in, buckle up, and get ready for the Thursday edition to the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. Looking at these index charts, one of the first things we want to do is remember to shake off that bias. We don't want to be looking at the charts for what we want them to be. We want to look at the charts for what they are and try to read into that how, as much as we can. I am a true believer that um, stock charts if you look them over carefully, will give you the information that you're looking for. They are um, they're trying to give us clues if we look deeper into price action. So first off, we had made a nice move yesterday, breaking through this resistance here in the chart. So the next step, if the bulls can continue to follow that through, I think would be the fill of this gap up here. See if we can push up into that area of the chart. And if we can push up into there, then we've got this big black um, lower high candle that we're going to have to deal with here in the diamonds. So as we push back up, we'll start looking at some of these levels up here, um, moving through in a progression to see if we can come back up to this big downtrend um, line in the chart and we want to remember that we're up so many days in a row that we're really stretching this rubber band pretty thin on that move back up and we're actually seeing that in um, in some of the uh, breadth readings as well that we're barely getting any improvement in those breadth readings but watch that carefully if we can continue to make that push and you know a day like today certainly possible if we take a look right now we could have some bear activity coming in as well that possibility of breaking back down below this little area of support and then right below it you can see this area of support that we could look at and if that were to fail on through there well maybe we come down into here and we kind of check some of these support levels out now a little rest or consolidation would probably be a healthy thing after this big zooming move back up here but we'll want to watch uh, carefully um, for the possibility of anything here in the market could be up could be down with the volatility of this market anything is possible if we take a look at our moving averages this has been a really good move for the Dow back above its 50 day and back above those moving averages but once again once we cross up above a 50 day it's pretty common for a little rest or pullback to to come back and see we'll test that 50 day and see if it'll hold and i honestly think that would be a very healthy thing for the market to do right now rather than this whole racing in and racing out thing that we've been doing in this market lately if we take a look at our spy spy rallying up there nicely we tested that downtrend level here in the chart 
um, yesterday was not quite able to break through that downtrend. This morning we're trying to gap above that to see if we can get through. Um, we'll have to see if that holds throughout the morning. Next level above, as you can see, would be right up in here. Can we run up into there and test that area? If we can, then we start looking at these areas right in here and that big black candle, that lower high that came in here. Can we break through there? I would be watching for the possibility of that chance that we get a resting consolidating pullback somewhere in here pretty soon so watch carefully for that possibility but i will not rule out the possibility with the data that we've got coming that we could push on higher and continue to stretch this move if we do get a rest or pullback this would be a natural place we want to see us try and hold but if that were to slip um, uh, below there i'm suggesting maybe a pullback into here could be a nice little resting place. If that doesn't hold, then we might come on down and fill that gap in here, rest back into some of these support levels, just consolidate a little bit, take a breath, instead of all of this emotional whipsaws that we've been seeing in the market recently. And if we take a look at our moving averages, this is also a natural place where we would see that potential rest consolidation here in the market, just underneath that 50 day moving average. Looking at our NASDAQ QQQ, breaking through the downtrend so that's a good sign here in the chart now once again what we need is we need that little bit of resting consolidation in here to prove we can hold some levels of price support if we could hold this level in here with a little bit of a resting pullback and hold above that downtrend i would say that would be very very bullish for the qqq to hold up in there um, but we do need a little bit of that rest. Having said that though, if we can get enough good bullish energy in the market, well, pushing on up and retesting some of these resistance levels certainly look like a possibility in the chart. And if the bears were to find that inspiration, pushing back down, maybe testing some of these areas in here, possibly even coming as low as here in a little bit of a resting consolidation. Remember, typically we do things like w type bottoming formations we catch lower i mean higher lows or we actually come all the way back down for a retest of the low that's more of a typical pattern than a straight down straight back up move so be prepared for and i'm not saying we're going to come all the way back down but be prepared if not this week next week a little bit of rest a little bit of consolidation in the market remembering here on the qqq we are still below that 50 day moving average so if we can find that inspiration push up there wouldn't be all that much of a surprise and that might be that place where we come into that little rest pattern in the market now when we look at the russell the poor russell been struggling here and i think one of the reasons the russell's been struggling is we've been seeing a push back into the big tech giants and what we experienced before here in the Russell is as long as we are so centric into those big tech giants, the Russell struggled to find enough energy, enough money to move along. And yesterday we had a pretty good day in some of those big techs, except maybe Google. But um, looking in here, um, you can see that we just haven't been able to perform here in IWM, still stuck against this major area price resistance in the chart that goes all the way back there to 2021 and 2022. If those bulls, however, do find that inspiration, push through that area, that's where we'll be looking for if they can get through there. And if they do, then we'll start looking up into here and see if we can start filling some of these gaps here in the chart and maybe moving all the way back up into that area of the chart. If the bears, however, were to find inspiration, we might lose this little upside trend if that were the case, but pushing back down, testing some the lows of this consolidation first, and then we would start looking maybe for a breakdown of that big, into that big black candle and past that, well, you can see those levels here in the chart. We could move on down pretty substantially if those bears were to gain some ground here for some reason. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX had a really nice pullback yesterday. Finally relieved quite a bit. 
um, um, of that pressure here in the market. We ended up, I'm going to remove all of these lines. You can see we came right back down here into this price support area of the chart. And we did break this upside trend. So we're in good shape here. Um, we're still quite elevated here in our VIX from what we've been used to. But this is going to help those options out a lot. Um, what we want to be watching for is any kind of bearish activity that might spike this back up a little bit. And it's still certainly a possibility after such a strong move down. Depending on how that data comes out, maybe today, um, watch that carefully here. But right now, nice relief in the VIX. If we take a look at, and that means the bulls are in control. If we take a look at our T2122, which is the four week new high, new low ratio. Interesting here, as we pushed up yesterday, you can see in here, we actually had more stocks declining than going up. And it's just that that number yesterday was just so much of an, an uncertain number. Um, it didn't give enough um, energy to to um, that decline in the economy to really push the Fed hard to cut rates. So the market was just, uh, I'm not sure how to uh, address this. And we just ended up having more stocks declining than going up yesterday. So if the bulls, if the bulls can find inspiration here on the day, well, we certainly have upside opportunity here to be paying attention to um, if they can get that going. And they're trying here this morning. If the bears, however, find inspiration in the market, well, clearly we've opened a pretty big opportunity for those for that resting pullback to potentially occur in the market. Shouldn't be a major surprise here. So keep a look, um, a look at that. If we take a look at our T2108, whoops, T2108, our four week new high, new low, excuse me, our percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average, you can see we ended up just barely squeaking out an increase here. So we had that little tiny lift here yesterday, although we saw so much going on in those indexes moving up here again, I think it was just the big tech giants leading the market again, trying to push back up uh, corporate buybacks happening there and trying to get things um, pushing in those uh, big giants but obviously struggling here overall with most of the market. That could be a reason to just have a little bit of caution uh, for that potential pullback because we're kind of losing some of that momentum, except for maybe, you know, some of those uh, big corporate buybacks. So watch that carefully. Still got some resistance here to deal with. There's nothing wrong with this. We're, we're just below the 50% area here in the chart. So if we can find bullishness, maybe a push up toward that 50% area, still possible. If the bears were to come in, well, we've got some support levels, so not too much to worry about there. Our T2107, pretty much the same thing. You can see the percentage of stocks above the 200 yesterday actually went down just a tiny little bit, but we're back up here above 50%. We're at 51, almost 52, well, 51 and a half on that uh, of stocks back above their 200 day moving average. We want to keep in mind, we've got quite a little bit of resistance here in that chart. So it's going to be important how we respond to this morning's economic data. So watch that closely. And T2101 showed us that little tiny bit of breadth increase here on the day, but it just really wasn't enough. It really showed that we were kind of thin overall in the market um, to really register for the kind of moves that we made yesterday. It really wasn't um, the kind of thing that we'd like to see. We'd like to see a little bit more energy in um, that market advance. And I think we might be running out of a little bit of that energy to the upside. We'll see. Um, as we move along today. So let's take a look at our um, economic calendar here for today. And my goodness, it's a busy one. As a matter of fact, not gonna be able to go over all the details here um, in this today. First off, we're gonna get jobless claims. And right now they're expecting 234,000. A little bit of an increase from 233. I think we wanna start watching this just as we heard yesterday. 
Um, Cisco reported good earnings, but they also came out and said, well, we're going to cut our workforce by 7%. I think we're going to start to see some of these numbers picking up a little bit on the jobless side of things um, if we can take any clues from what some of these retailers are saying. So watch that carefully. If this were to miss and go to the upside, could have a little bit of bearishness in the market come in if that does miss. If um, we take a look at retail sales, the retail sales here, they're pretty optimistic here that retail sales went up by 0.3% from 0.0. .0. And I got to tell you, that's not the things that Home Depot and folks like that are saying. So we'll want to watch that pretty closely here um, to see if those retail sales did increase. A miss here could also be a little bit of um, an engagement for the bears. Watch that carefully. You can see X vehicles, they're looking for that to decline and they're looking for X vehicles and gas to decline, which right there in alone says that the consumer is slowing a bit. Beyond that, we've got a Philly Fed manufacturing, Empire State manufacturing number, import export prices. We've got um, more Fed speak in there. We're going to get um, industrial production numbers. And they're looking for those industrial production numbers to decline pretty substantially from a 0.6 to a negative 0.1. Manufacturing output from 0.4 to a negative 0.3 and then even the capacity utilization dropping by a couple of tenths in here. So we'll want to watch carefully on that industrial production number. Business inventories, housing market index, natural gas report, bond auctions going off in here, more Fed speak, and then we're going to be into the Treasury International Capital and Fed balance sheet after the bell. Going into Friday, keep in mind over here, we're going to have housing starts and permits, consumer sentiment, Baker Hughes, and more Fed conversation. So keep an eye on those for tomorrow. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar here for today. We've already got a couple earnings here this morning. Let's take a look at how they're going. A couple of the notables would be uh, Baba reporting this morning. It looks like it's having a little bit of trouble here moving to the downside um, after its report. And we're hearing from Walmart this morning and Walmart moving sharply higher here. So those are a couple of the notables here this morning. Keep an eye on that. It looks like Walmart uh, beat, beat and they're saying stable consumer health. So, hey, that's, um, that's good news. So watch uh, carefully on that Walmart trying to move higher. We're also going to hear from stocks like um, AIT, CLBT, NICE, SPTN, and TPR, Tapestry, will report. A nice pop there as well. So we got a little bullishness in some of these retail numbers here this morning. If we take a look uh, for this afternoon, Pretty small list for this afternoon of notables. AMCR, most notable, probably AMAT here on the day. Um, COUR will be reporting. HRB will be in there. And Ross Stores will be reporting. So keep an eye on those for this afternoon. How about we take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find those videos, these videos to be useful, helpful, if you could do me that favor and click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Let's take a look at a few stocks setting up. And remember, everyone, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful in this market. Try not to over trade. Um, we're going to get a lot of data today that could provide some additional volatility to us. And remember that we have stretched pretty far from these lows um, back to the upside. We may still have that possibility of a little rest or a little bit of consolidating pullback 
in these indexes in the very near future. So try not to get that fear of missing out as we stretch up. First off, let's take a look at a few of these. Um, really liking the way McDonald's is resting here. What's interesting is McDonald's came out and said, oh yeah, we're expecting sales to decline the next quarter. But ever since the earnings report, it's been a buy, um, straight up buy. Uh, no one seems to be concerned about um, what they said in their earnings call. So you can see we've got a nice little upside move going on here, nice little resting consolidation. That's a bullish chart. Um, there's no way you can look at it any other way. I would be watching for that next opportunity for the upside there. Take a look at Home Depot. Ever since they come out and said, hey, we expect three to four percent difference um, in sales decline um, next year. It's been up every day since and still trying to push higher here. I would watch carefully here for that possibility um, that this could find that higher low in here and then look for that next opportunity to the upside on Home Depot. We just, hey, buy it, I guess. Um, earnings don't matter. So watch that carefully here in the chart. Um, still going to stay on this theme of defensive sector stocks. My goodness, um, Coca-Cola is still looking very good. Tried to make a move yesterday, faded back at the end of the day, but still looking very bullish here. Keep an eye on Coke. This is one that has been really volatile in this little consolidation area here on tap. Um, I still want to keep an eye on it. it. This easily could fail, could easily start to take off, but keep an eye on tap um, one of those defensive type stocks here to be paying attention to um, overall um, also um, you know Walmart fits into that defensive sector area big pop here today on its earnings now rest or pull back look for the next opportunity in there I wouldn't want to chase that earnings report in here today but very nice moves overall Hershey still holding in there, very, very bullish, still liking Mo. Uh, Mo really looking good, pushing up here in that bullishness. No reason to uh, shy away from that, at least at the moment. Uh, 3M still sitting up, a very nice bullish pattern, looking for that upside move. If we look to the financial side of things, XLF, big strong rally here, coming back up to some trend resistance here in the chart and price resistance in the chart but we did break right back through that 50-day moving average and then zoom on higher so keep an eye on those for any kind of a rest or pullback and i'd be looking at stocks like oh jp morgan jp morgan breaking through resistance yesterday little rest little consolidation in here i'd be looking for potentially an opportunity there don't rule out the possibility that this um big stretch may not hold and we could reject and come back find a little support and then go on higher but watch that carefully um, um, other stocks in that area that seem to be doing pretty darn good would be goldman goldman stretching all the way back up here and really soon could be retesting these recent highs here in Goldman. So a little rest or pullback in here would be an opportunity. Now I can't say the same for things like BAC. BAC rallying back up, trying to test that downtrend in here, but I would be watching this pretty closely for that possibility of that failure underneath the 50 day moving average. So a little bit of a mix here, BAC, Citibank, both in that same um, area. WFC would be another um, showing some real um, resistance even right along the 200 day moving average in that possibility that they could roll on over here so kind of a mix here there are a few long and a few short if we take a look at that energy area um, XLE we've had some interesting moves here in some stocks on XLE if we take a look at stocks like VLO um, on um, the refining side this looks like a head and shoulders to me and that possibility that we could fail through that neckline here so watch carefully here on Valero not looking good but if we look at Exxon Mobil Exxon Mobil's looking pretty darn good here holding in this nice consolidating move right now I would look for that opportunity that that could pop on through 
we might start stretching back up here towards some of those highs. Saw some moves in like ConocoPhillips trying to break that downtrend here. If it can hold after breaking that downtrend, hold this higher low in here. Look for that opportunity for a recovery here in Conoco. Um, Occidental, Occidental looking short still. As we continued to find that downtrend resistance, failing on down, now it could make a higher low here. I wouldn't rule out the possibility that it could retest this low, however. So still not ready for something like Occidental. So here again, we have quite a mix. If you take a look at our utilities, well, we're doing pretty darn good in those utilities. Keep an eye on those stocks like NEE, been setting up really good southern company looking good here in the market setting up for the next upside move so keep an eye on some of those utilities so with that everyone i want to wish you all a fantastic day we've got a lot of data coming our way so be prepared for some volatility be safe be careful and as always i wish you all the very best we'll see you right back here bright and early friday morning